Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hey, Calvary, Amber here. Today we're continuing looking at Solomon's story, and we're in 1 Kings 3. And it starts off talking about how Solomon loved the Lord, and he was walking in his statutes or commands, just like David, his father. And he is worshiping God, and he sacrifices a thousand burnt offerings, which is a lot. Um, and while he's worshiping, God comes to him in a dream and asks him what he wants God to do for him. And we're going to read his response. So it starts in verse 6. Um, and Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of David, my father. Although I am but a little child, I do not know how to go out or to come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And it goes on to say that God was pleased with him because uh, he had humbled himself before God and, and asked for God's wisdom so that he could lead God's people uh, in a righteous way. And he didn't ask for wealth or fame. Uh, and so this pleased God. And God gives him wisdom, but he also gives him the fame and wealth. Um, and you will see this as you follow his story. Um, and I encourage you to continue to read the rest of chapter 3 because it is a demonstration of the godly wisdom that he receives. Uh, and it's a really cool story. But the reason that Solomon was able to request this wisdom is because, one, he was worshiping God. He was following God and worshiping him. And when we do that, we are able to recognize God's voice in our life and we're able to listen to what he is leading us to do. Then Solomon was humble. He recognized that he was king, not because of anything he had done, but because God had put him in that place. And he admitted he didn't know what he was doing. That phrase that he was just a little boy and didn't know his coming in or going out is a phrase of, I don't know what I'm doing and I need help. And so he recognized that he needed God's help in his life. And then he recognized God's kingship and authority over him. Yes, he was the human king of Israel at this time, but God is the ultimate king over every king on earth. And he recognized that because he said that he was God's servant and that the people were God's, not his. And so we can see through all of this that Solomon was doing what Jesus talks about in Matthew 6, verse 33. And this is in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount and Jesus says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. This is in the midst of Jesus talking about um, anxiety and how we are worried about life and our body and the clothes we're going to wear and what we're going to eat. And we're so worried. And Jesus said, you don't have to be worried. Just seek first God's kingdom. And so many times that's our last resort. We go to God at the very end when we can't figure things out on our own. And no wonder we have so much worry and anxiety. Um, instead, we can live like Solomon and live submitting ourselves to God with humility um, and seek first his kingdom. Because when we do that, um, our life is going to be different. And how we can do that is by doing what Solomon did, loving God. It said he walked in his, his statutes, his commands, which means he knew them and he followed them with his life. And so we need to know what God says and follow it. We need to worship him, have conversation with God. And when we do that, it will change the way that we live. It will change the way we view our time and how we want to use it. We want to serve God and glorify him with how we live. It will change the way we view money and that it's not ours, but it's God's. And we will have a desire to 
uh, tithe and glorify God with how we spend our money. It will change relationships and that we want to give grace and forgiveness to people and speak words of encouragement and kindness. It will change our life if we seek first God's kingdom. So today I pray that you choose to follow God and seek him above everything else. Have a good day.